had a little accident opening the lid. You know, if that was contaminated with coronavirus, it would have been affected already. So what can you do? Good morning, people of the world, specifically the people of the city of Toronto. Good morning. It is 5.54 in the morning. I have the quarantine schedule right now, which means you never get to really sleep during the night time, so you're awake. So, yeah, what can we say about quarantine? It sucks, but it's gonna help save a lot of lives in the long term. But today we're not talking about that. Today I'm gonna show you how this city portrays itself as a desolated quarantine victim. Over there we have uh, the first sighting of solitude of this city, Humber Bay Bridge. Not a single soul right now, jogging, running, walking. Pretty devastating situation actually. Let's just uh, come here, take a look closer and let's see the lake. Now it seems to be fairly windy at the moment. So please for please uh, forgive me for giving you bad quality of audio. So this has a very eerie feeling as we walk through this deserted path where people should be doing exercise if this was uh, a different time without the COVID-19. Well, I pretty much expect to see zombies anytime popping out, so watch out. <laughs> and so we know where we are in this timeline. As of today, Canada stands at 40,000 coronavirus cases and just hit yesterday 2,000 death mark. To put it in perspective, a month ago when they declared the provincial emergency situation, we didn't have, we, I think we only had like a hundred deaths or something like that. And I just experienced the weirdest thing ever. People, keep in mind, I have been at home for a few weeks already, you know, barely going out to the minimum. So like the people interaction has been very low. And I'm walking to the park and I see this guy just like stops like five meters distance from me. And I keep looking at him and I'm like, what is going on? Do I, do I have something? Yeah, I have the virus. <laughs> you know, that's what he implied. Anyways, everything friendly, but like some people taking it very seriously, other people not so much. I think it has to go in the middle more or less, you know, to keep the good balance. But yeah, curious. So yes, after being isolated for more than a few weeks it's the new world feels very weird and like my first instinct is just to like not come too close but like you know ah oh, we have to like change the way we think now psychologically well this is terrible <laughs> good lord it's mosquito season because I see a million right now which means that in the next week or so we're all gonna be under an attack lucky for me I have air conditioning but like when you start walking outside that's when you're gonna suffer so this new normal is not for everybody I tell you I'm curious as to see what's the reaction for people right now as I continue walking. So far, 
everybody is like spacing out, keeping their distance. This is like the end of the world kind of thing, you know. If I was talking to myself from a few months ago, I never even remotely thought something like this was gonna take a hold of the world. So affirming it 100%, the city has become 100% more hostile. You can you can feel it outside with the people and the vibe and the energy. Sorry, there's a fly on the camera. So yes, this is what seven in the morning rush hour on a Friday looks like in Toronto, the capital city of Canada after a full month of social distancing as you can see there is not much traffic however there's still some cars i mean it's not like if it's desolated that this would have been chaotic on a normal friday let's just keep going keep seeing i see many people wearing face masks <laughs> God almighty, I feel like if I just woken up from a coma or something, I haven't been out in a while and it looks like a different world to me right now. And one of the things that has made me go out and explore the city after a full month of isolation is my sleep pattern is completely destroyed. I mean, right now, I am on the night schedule, like I said before. I sleep during the day, and I get to live my life at night, and that's crazy. So basically today, I want to show you the city, the whole Toronto, and fix my schedule as well, because I'm fucked. The mosquitoes are everywhere, they're killing me right now, and also, you will think that after a month of isolation, not coming outside of your house, trees will start to have any leaves on, which some have, but it's basically the same as a month ago. As a matter of fact, I'm wearing two sweaters and one winter coat. It's not even getting any warmer right now. Oh my goodness. This is crazy. There's like clouds of mosquitoes, I mean, not only do we have to face coronavirus, we also have mosquitoes everywhere. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, shit. This is the most intense mosquito situation that I have ever been in my life. Like, there is thousands and thousands. Holy crap. You, like, it's a very hostile environment right now. It's empty, no cars at all. At least there's no much cold today. I have two options. I can either go this way and see the city, real life, or I can go towards exhibition and explore more of the nature side. I think I'm gonna stick with nature right now and try to avoid people as much possible. And then, once I hit Espadina, I'll go. My, I'll make my way up. I had to make myself out of there. The noise, the noise was just too great, and the mosquitoes were crazy. I still have some mosquitoes on me. So yes, people, this is how a month of isolation looks like for a Canadian in Ontario. Basically. I'm seeing the world for the first time so far and I there are things that I like some other things I don't like let's just keep watching keep seeing and see how people react so far people is hmm, they try to keep their distance mosquitoes keep harassing everybody here holy crap like I'm not sure if this can be seen but It's just thousands, 
thousands. I'm under attack right now, actually. I'm getting out of here. Maybe it's because of the water. Who knows? But yeah, it's a green world right now. Nature is hostile, people is hostile. <laughs> Life itself is hostile, but we will make it through. We're gonna be stronger than what we were before. It's just, it might take longer than what we're used to. <sighs> Anyways, as we continue with this tour of social isolation, Canada, Toronto, let's uh, keep seeing the changes that a man experiences after not making it out of house, out of home for a month. <sighs> What a different world. Yes, people is acting in the most funny way. Everybody is like looking scared. There is paranoia. It's an invisible enemy. Now like, I'm not sure if it's because of the media or what it is maybe it's media maybe it's just a fear but oh well, yeah people is not as friendly as it used to be it's crazy and i haven't seen many people i can't imagine how it's gonna be toronto once we set food in this city that is gonna be a game changer i'm gonna be really surprised all the mosquitoes is just completely under attack this is quite an adventure to make it out of home for the first time. <laughs> it's like if the world wants to eat you alive. Basically, that's what's happening. So you just keep going. It's actually increasingly difficult to walk. For those of you who don't know, this is Lake Ontario. But as people is trying to go with people, it's just... <laughs> You come under the question, which way should you go so everybody is safe? So, I'm not sure. But mosquitoes are everywhere. Fear is everywhere. This is completely different than what I thought this was gonna be. Like, what's going on? Oh my God. Oh, dude. Is the world falling apart? Then again, I am trapped. <laughs> it's like there's not enough room so people can walk. Following the social distancing rules. So like, come on. But yeah, talking about this, paranoia is very rampant these days. I could tell you as an experience in my young house. Now my mom, my dad, they have the rules, the set of rules and guidelines that you need to follow every time you come in or out of the house. And that includes washing your hands, using sanitizer, drying them with a paper towel, you know, spraying alcohol in the doorknob, things like that. It's, uh, it's crazy. Definitely, we can all say after this is over that we experience one of the weird, well, it's common occurrence. It happens every so often in human history. It's just, we thought it wasn't gonna happen to us. So we have made it into Ontario Place. I know for too long, cause I'm making a left turn here towards uh, Exhibition and Spadina so we can start exploring the city. There is many things I want to experience today. Grocery shopping, walking in the street, Dundas Square. It's like, this is like a whole different world to me right now. It's uh, dreamy, shocking. Let's see how it turns out to be. Oh, and TTC. As it's a, a natural occurrence for many of the human beings, 
right now I'm asking myself for some coffee and it gets me thinking like are they even like are there any cafeterias even open on like how am I get, how am I even gonna get coffee just like ordering through any of these so-called apps I'm not gonna name any of them just to not give them any credit but what a weird oh looking world probably I have a mosquito in my eye right people I'm not sure where you come from hopefully you come from the city of Toronto or you're curious enough to get to see how this city is but that's it that is home over there that is a city of opportunities and dreams for many of us okay excited to say that we are making it in this city right now eager to get into close contact and see how humans are behaving mosquitoes on the other hand are not practicing social distancing at all come on rough force you will instruct them to do it so because they are harassing everybody basically just a few steps away from trinity bellwoods park and yeah people basically they try to avoid you nobody smiles anymore it's it's very much different than what it was before i think i'm gonna have to start taking this even more seriously and get the paranoia in my mind to be like in accordance with everybody's behavior because uh, it makes you wonder I wonder if like coffee still exists let's just find it out okay you gonna get a large coffee please with two milk and one honey cruller it's gonna be on David? Okay, at this point, if I were to get infected with coronavirus, I would have been already been infected because I touched the handle, I touched the coffee that she touched. <laughs> like, there's like seven points of infection that could have happened so far, and I still have to eat my honey cruller. But, yeah, people are taking this seriously or it's just a paranoia, who knows? I literally have been home so long that I forgot that Tim Hortons changed the leads. <laughs> I was expecting to see the other one. Oh, it's been a long time. Okay, so we are in the place where the city issues the most infraction tickets regarding social distancing that is Trinity Bellwoods Park right now I'm just like taking a one minute break so I can drink my coffee and eat my cruller and uh, then we're gonna make it towards Queen Street all the way to Dundas Street Chinatown let's see how these people is coping but yeah we're gonna talk point of view right now so as you can see there is like there are little people in the park actually, well, you have to say that it's beginning to rain, but yeah. Now, there is the news, 
CTB breaking news and well yeah it, it feels like a Sunday that never happened that's what it feels like remember people it's a Friday and it's like 8 in the morning yeah I almost didn't notice that nobody's open all the stores that you see here are closed some I guess will open but like 95% of the things that you see here is closed on Queen Street everybody is also avoiding eye contact because you still have to dream of flying somewhere you know especially right now so what otherwise would have been a very vibrant Friday morning busy with people there is absolutely not a single soul So yeah, construction has been stopped, that's for sure. That's the only thing moving in the city right now. We took a shortcut here in the graffiti alley. And yeah, Queen Street looks pretty desolated. I only saw one coffee shop open and I only saw shoppers open. Other than that, nothing. Dead town, dead town. Well, this expedition has been plagued with uh, difficulties from the beginning. First, we had to battle the mosquitoes. Now there's no more mosquitoes. Thank you. But it's beginning to rain. So Mother Nature is playing with us, toying with me. But we're gonna continue regardless if it rains, if it snows or anything else so yes I made it into Queen and Spadina a very busy corner with the McDonald's over there and there is no pedestrians no traffic and it's a Friday now that's impressive let's just hit Chinatown before we continue towards uh, on this square and the Eaton Center because I want to take a look to see if uh, how Chinatown is coping with this so let's just follow up approaching Chinatown nobody nobody walking nobody jogging and also I just discovered that McDonald's is not they're only doing delivery that's it <laughs> what the world has gone to I'm actually venturing to walk in the middle of the avenue on a Friday at 9 in the morning because there are no cars. Wow, okay, there's some cars coming here, but like I didn't see nobody for a while. So. Other than a few signs saying limit one, one item per customer supermarket in Chinatown seems to be doing business as usual although all the employees are wearing face masks so let's just continue now there seems to be a break and enter over there guess how the cops are checking something out so I am baffled because Chinatown is usually like one of the busiest places in the whole city and like there's so much life and like absolutely ghost town very eerie because everybody in the supermarket is just like standing still looking there's no customers 
most restaurants are closed up. They're not even doing takeout or delivery. This is surreal. But construction doesn't stop. On another note, I'm just taking a little shortcut to get us back in Dundasang University because uh, it's just farther that way. But yeah, I was saying, you know, I was uh, explaining that the cops over there, they were doing a police report because uh, from what I can see, somebody broke into Rexdale and those crimes are like being elevated right now. <laughs> Empty. This is Chinatown. Empty. Empty, empty, empty. And you will expect some su supermarkets to be busy, but no. Still, I like, there's like quite traffic on the street, not never like a Friday morning kind of thing, but like over here we have the art gallery of Ontario. China down is over there. But no life. Even the lucky moose in Chinatown was closed. So if we are all supposed to have two meters distance between each other when we're outside, what happens with the few businesses that remain open? How do employees maintain the distance of two meters between each other while maintaining work activities? Like, how do you cook in the kitchen, for example, maintaining two meter distance with your other co-worker? That's a tough question, huh? So, you're only allowed to be next to a person if you're living in the same household, same house. But somehow you can work with people without maintaining the two meter distance. Well, we are right here at the uh, University in Dundas. Not a single soul, empty, dead land. And we're gonna go right now to Bloor Street to take a look at over there. Then, you, then we make a right on Young and then we check the Eaton Center and such. Just keep looking, keep seeing, keep being impressed from being home for a whole month of uh, isolation. And when I finally make it out, the world is so much different. As a matter of fact, the world is more different than what it was. Every day it changes. It's crazy. Three months ago, I thought, you know, coronavirus. That was your some cold. <laughs> but no, look what it has become to. And you can walk in the middle of University Avenue. No problem no problem it's like the twilight twilight song basically as i'm making myself go towards uh bluer street or in queen's park i really want a second coffee i have been up for since yesterday at 4 p.m and <laughs> I'm not sure where to get it because everything I see is either closed or not working so let's see what happens it pretty much feels like if I have the city for myself that's how it feels mixed with uh, this being a Sunday very early in the morning like very easy to lose track of time now that's uh it's one of the things that happens while we social distance. We lose track of time and responsibilities are not what, it, what they were before. They change. <laughs> People, 
check that out. That's the first time that I'm seeing something like this. All the grass has been fenced. Temporarily, of course. It just has to prevent people from chilling in the park. Very good measure by the city. But like, I'm surprised I walked all the way through Sony Brooks and I never saw any fencing. But here in Queens Park, yeah, it's uh, it's happening. Oh, no, maybe not. Not so fast. It's a three generation rest area. So maybe it's not related to COVID. It still prevents people from chilling there. As we keep exploring Toronto, I would love if you if you guys like share your so much noise now. If you if you guys share like how's the quarantine where you live? You know, where are you guys watching this from? I know probably some Toronto people, but like what about in the other parts of Canada or the world? Like we are all experiencing this, it's just in a different manner. And some countries are more lax than others, but you know, we're blessed because Canada is like, it's Canada, you can't compare Canada. But yeah, drop in the comments, share your experience. Let's just continue with the tour. And this is coming to the point that people is actually like avoiding walking in the same sidewalk. And like some get on the grass, others get on the street. I do it myself too, I believe in the measures, but it's just the reality right now. A very few percentage of people don't care, but I think maybe if they, maybe they care, it's just like you are a social person, you know, you are like, it's hard to change the behavior that you have been used to all your life. Well, let's just continue, let's see, let's see. We are steps away from Bloor Street. The farther north, the farther north, the farthest north that we're gonna make it in this tour of the city. Because from here we're gonna go south on Young and then all the way back to the lake. So I think that covers the whole downtown core, basically. So let's just continue to see. Some people mentioned there's some boards on the stores here so I want to check them out I want to see how they are right now Bluer Street empty ghost town oh my goodness like this is so impressive I mean a month ago things were so much different I wonder what would have happened if I had stayed home for like two more months and then come out. But yeah, like we can say that, you know, these stores, the high end stores are like obviously closed right now. But I'm not seeing any wooden boards or something. Let's just keep seeing. I believe that people there is just waiting to get in the TTC. It's like you can feel the vibe. Everybody's just so tense. It's like no more friendliness anymore. You cannot even hear music on the street or anything. It's just ghost town. There's uh, two police cars over there. And they're coming in the Manual Life Center. I think they're ready to enforce some social distancing rules. <laughs> because they had the attitude. No, but like really looking forward to get some coffee somewhere. Because uh, everything is closed. No sign of a coffee shop or anything. This sucks. 
So we are on Young Street right now, and the situation is the same basically. And I'm really losing hope of finding the coffee shop because uh, everything seems to be closed. How's people doing? Well, there's no people on the street, that's what's happening. That's what's going on. Check it out. There you go. Rotation. Cash money is open, I guess. Nope. Not even cash money. Take out. What a not house ordering coffee from there, like you don't even know what to do, where to move. It's just <laughs> this is funny. Had a little accident opening the lid. You know, if that was contaminated with coronavirus, it would have been infected already. So like what can you do? Yeah, like just gonna walk in the middle of the street really because we are like on a Friday morning rush hour in Young Street and there is no traffic no people the only places open are shoppers Tim Hortons a few few restaurants really for but just for takeout and that's it that, that's the situation oh I'm gonna get run over so had to dodge a car coming there but everything is good so far We are steps away from Dundas Square and I can say I see a little bit more people here walking but like I keep saying it's a ghost town, it is a ghost town and just Tim Hortons open, shoppers, some convenience stores, a few restaurants, let's just continue walking. So like you see over there you have more cops Seems like the police is everywhere right now. I'm thinking there's a lot of break and enters. Now the people is staying more at their houses. Thieves are robbing stores, no houses anymore. So we're here in Dundas Square and I have been here for like five minutes trying to take a picture and a video and like this is just what it is. Nobody on the street. Well there's one crazy over there singing. You can hear it and you can see it. But other than that, ghost town. Kind of like I'm waiting for the sign to come up with the COVID stop the spread. Thing, so I can put it on frame but it's not happening so one thing that I just noticed H&M border their store but they painted the wood and now it's looking gray so you can actually realize that the store is bored it's pretty clever and it looks much better than just leaving the wood there to look bad you know, but yeah, they're taking precautions. They got the barricades there, like... Nobody knows if there's gonna be any riots or anything. We just have to wait and see. So far, the Canadian government has been handling very, 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 very well for everybody. And like, they're taking care of people. I'm not sure how... Well, yeah, I hear the other countries how they're doing. But like, I'm proud of the Canada system. 
So I think there's not much to see here. I'm just gonna continue the trip down on Young Street towards the City Hall. Let's just check that out. Let's see how that is right now. So follow me. Food logger, vans, our two other shops that are taking steps into boarding up the place. They did food logger painted it so it's not really noticeable. Vans, you can't really see it. Ah, this is a new reality for now and people's gonna have to adapt. But it's not gonna be like this forever, so we are making it through. So we made it to Queen and Young and there hasn't been any cars going down on this side of the road for like the five minutes that I have been walking. Very few people. This is a different city. My eyes cannot believe what I'm seeing. It's like if I got a walking from a coma or something and boom. This is it. It's the apocalypse. Waiting for the zombies to pop out anytime. Or the aliens. City Hall is basically what you expected it to be. Much desolation. Just like everything here. Very far from different than a regular day. But let's just go inside and take a look at it. See all the food, all the food vendors are closed. Nobody. Although, now you are allowed to sit on the benches as long as you practice social distancing. That was yesterday on the news. Thursday there's something because I don't even know the days anymore, 24. But yeah, there is nobody. Sadly, there is one thing that you still see, no matter any pandemic or anything, you still see homeless people, you still see the crazy ones, I have seen six people with mental health issues, but colloquially you call them the crazy ones, and you see a lot of uh, construction workers, police that's all the people that you get to really see so as we finish showing you this beautiful plaza we're gonna continue our way down towards the lakeshore some people have seen some foxes down there I'm looking for them and overall, you know, very traumatizing sighting. So, yeah, actually walking in the middle of the street today. <laughs> on a Friday. Ah, thank God, another Team Hortons is open. Okay, some cars are actually coming my way, but yeah, just like not many cars, not many people, the city has changed. I think all of us have changed for some. I hope everybody that is watching this have taken this isolation time to become a better version of themselves. I am nobody to judge, but... You know, we have to do something positive about this. Oh, there is a lane way here. I'm gonna explore it. Even though I live here all my life, I'm still like a tourist sometimes because it's a magnificent city and it has many hidden alleys. So let's just take a look at it. Oh, here we go. It's just a regular regular laneway 
So it's not Lily and us. Not very exciting, but we'll see. So let's continue with the tour right now. We are in the getting into the financial center and we're gonna walk through here. We're gonna take a look at Union Station, CN Tower. Let's just like keep exploring the city. different than you know the normal so we are here on the outside of uh, Union Station can you read it there Union Station you can see the CN Tower over there and the images speak by themselves. I mean, a few people like police cars. There's like police cars all over the place now. Like, I wonder what calls are they attending. Look at the Fairmont, the Royal York. Not much. Oh. How do I feel after like I made it outside after a whole month? I feel like it's gonna be a while before we go back to normal, unfortunately. And I'm happy that us Canada is taking this seriously. Cause uh, you know, if not, it could have been out of control and proportions, but like so far people is cooperating, you know, the government is working things are like sailing smooth but it's not like a few weeks this is gonna be a while like we're in this for the long term so and like I keep seeing cops all over the place special console as I was saying but yeah just uh make sure that you use this time do something better for yourself you know like if you're unemployed find something to do get a hobby or something and work on it and try to adapt adapt and survive and we'll see how it goes in the worst case we are talking about one year two years who knows but the world has seen worse. I can tell you that. Think about World War II, World War I. There's like so much hardcore things that has happened and like, you know, we made it through. So don't be alarmed. We're gonna overcome this united. Yes, we have arrived at the CN Tower. That is the CBC building over there. That's the stadium right there. And I'm the only person here. For those of you that just got into the train with me right now, it's Friday, 11 in the morning, a month after the state of emergency was declared in the province of Ontario and probably a month in the middle it's gonna be a long way man 
Okay, we are almost at Queensway. We just left uh, Royer Center. Apparently, even though there is nobody around, they still have a security person telling you that you can't do any videos over there. So, go figure. I googled it up and yeah, it's private property. So, what can we do? That's Queensway over there, so let's uh, take a look. Well, one positive thing is that you can actually see leaves on the trees. So, hello spring, bring it on. But yeah, we are like minutes away from the end of our journey. We are in the HDO park here and there's the kayak rental over there. I have to say this is the most people that I have seen the whole time and I, I have been walking the city for six hours so but yeah let's continue and so this concludes the end of our journey Field Tower, Royer Stadium, beautiful lake I have been doing it since 5 in the morning and it's 11.36 so really hope that you enjoy the look at the city as of right now with uh, the social distancing rules you can always subscribe to my channel for part number two which is which is gonna cover different things like going to a supermarket liquor store stuff like that but for now let's just uh, get some rest do something positive for social distancing and yourself and follow up.